please stand and join in singing hymn 290. Good afternoon and welcome. Our service begins on page one of your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now sing together the Gloria in excelsis.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and for the relief of all who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in reading Psalm 100 by the half verse. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Know this, the Lord himself is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now stand and sing together hymn 433.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the crowd found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may believe and see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Setting aside special time to offer thanks to God. It's not just an American tradition, but it is indeed an ancient tradition. The roots of this practice can be traced all the way back to the Hebrew scriptures. One of the first bits of scripture that I ever committed to memory was the 100th Psalm, which we read a few minutes ago. The Episcopal Church that I grew up in was one of those old school parishes that did morning prayer as the primary service at least three Sundays a month. And every Sunday that we did morning prayer at my parish, we would sing the Jubilati Deo, which is the 100th Psalm. I sang that psalm so many times as a kid that it is ingrained in my memory. And to this day, I have a hard time saying the contemporary version, the version we just read, because I'm so used to the words of the right one version that I sang over and over again growing up. But what the 100th psalm is, is a call for thanksgiving. It's a call to be joyful in God and to give thanks to God for all that he has given to us. Listen to verse 3. Oh, go, and I'm going to use the traditional version. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. Just look at the first part of that verse. The very fact that we can enter the gates of God or the courts of God's kingdom, that's the biggest thing that we as Christians have to be thankful for. God loves us. He loves us so much that he has chosen us in his son, Jesus Christ, and we have been given the opportunity to come before the gates of heaven. And it is because of his gift in Jesus Christ. There is nothing greater than this. There is no greater reason to be, to be thankful. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. The psalmist continues, for the Lord is gracious. His mercies are everlasting and his truth endureth from generation to generation. But our thanksgiving to God should extend beyond the gift of our salvation. That is surely the greatest thing that we have to be thankful for, but God's blessings surround us all the time. We are called to constantly be giving thanks. In our first lesson from Deuteronomy chapter 26, from the very beginning of their time in the promised land, 
the Israelite people were called to present thank offerings to God, offerings of thanksgiving. This was a response to the blessings that they had received. It was meant to be an annual festival, not unlike our annual recognition of the Thanksgiving holiday. And on it, the first fruits or the first and best of the harvest were to be presented to God. By offering up their first fruits, the Israelites were acknowledging that all they had was because of God. The very fact that they were no longer slaves in Egypt, the fact that they were no longer wandering in the wilderness, it was all because God loved them. And God had delivered them and chosen them to be a part of this new inheritance, this promised land, this land flowing with milk and honey. By offering their gifts before God, the Israelite people were making a confession. They were confessing that God was good and that even when times were difficult, God had always been with them and his blessings continued to flow. In our modern age of excess, it seems like it's sometimes difficult for us to be thankful. In a world of so much abundance, we can easily fall into the trap of entitlement. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into the grocery store and I've gotten angry over the fact that they don't have the exact brand of a particular item that I want. But we're all kind of like that sometimes, aren't we? We feel entitled to have what we want, and we want it at the moment that we want it. And we can get totally disconnected from the fact that God has given us so much already. Just the reality that we live in this country, this country where there is so much food, is something to be thankful for. A few weeks ago, I was listening to NPR, and I was shocked to hear about how the war in Ukraine was causing extreme famine in Africa. Evidently, much of the grain that feeds the people in East Africa comes from the Ukraine, and that has suddenly been cut off. The most recent estimates say that nearly 23 million people in Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya alone are now facing extreme hunger. That's significantly higher than the already high numbers of starving people prior to Russia's invasion. As we sit down at our Thanksgiving dinners, as we eat our turkey and dressing, our sweet potato casserole, and our pumpkin pie, I can't help but wonder how much more thankful those starving people in Africa would be if they had the opportunity to sit at the very same table. But unfortunately, Africa is not alone when it comes to poverty and starvation. Across the globe, there are places where malnutrition claims more lives than any other cause. Even here in North Carolina, the eastern part of our state where we live ranks at the top of the nation among children living in poverty. Over one-fourth of the children in the counties of eastern North Carolina are classified as food insecure, meaning that they don't know where their next meal is coming from. How is it that in a land of such abundance, in a part of the state where we literally grow all our food, how can this be possible? Well, the answer lies in the most important part of Thanksgiving, which is the giving part. Truly being thankful means that we not only offer praise for what we have, but it means that we're willing to share the blessings that we receive. If we were to read on in Deuteronomy chapter 26, we would see that the law of God not only required an offering to be made to God as a, as a symbol of thanksgiving, but it also required that an offering be given to the Levites, who are the priests, but also the aliens, the fatherless, and the widow. Offerings should be given to the poor. This was part of being thankful, sharing with those in need. It's God's will for his people to take care of those who don't have. 
In Matthew 25, Jesus said, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And he goes on, whatever you did for the least of these, you did also for me. Being thankful is about so much more than offering a prayer of saying, thank you for what I have. It's about living a life of thanksgiving. And to live a life of thanksgiving, that's something we can do no matter how much or how little we have. No matter where we are in life, God has blessed us. Even as we take our dying breath, that breath is a gift. Thanksgiving isn't something we come together to do once a year. It's something that flows out of our hearts and our souls. And it pours out into the world around us. We are a people who have been blessed And God wants us to bless others. Because even if we don't have food in our belly, even if our mouths are parched and our bodies are decaying, by God's grace, we have eaten something that is of far more value. We have eaten of the bread of life. We have tasted of the cup of salvation. And when Christ is in us, we will never hunger or thirst again. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day. And as you gather around your family table with your friends and loved ones, don't just celebrate Thanksgiving. Be Thanksgiving. Let us pray. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we come before you today with so much to be thankful for. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for the sustenance that you give us for the food on our table, for our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Lord, help us to be mindful of those who don't have those things, of the suffering and the hungry. And Lord, help us to have such thankful hearts that we are willing to share our blessings with others. We ask all this in Christ's name. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed on page 4. Let us stand as we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the litany of thanksgiving. Please kneel as you're able. Let us pray. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. 
for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. Thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. For the communion of saints in all times and places. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. You may show another sign of peace. You may be seated. Well, good afternoon and welcome. It's uh, wonderful to have you all worshiping with us today. Just a few brief reminders. Um, we do have a Advent wreath making uh, workshop on November the 30th. That's also going to be a, a potluck supper. So we invite you to sign up through the e-news or to call the um, church office if you're interested in making an Advent wreath. Uh, December the 4th will be our annual meeting. It's going to be between the morning services, so it'll be at 9 o'clock a.m., and we will, be, we will be serving breakfast during the meeting as well. December 9th is the church Christmas party. That's going to be at the home of Anna Stevens. The, the address is in your bulletin. And then the last thing I'll draw your attention to is the Cocoa Christmas Tea. Uh, it's going to be a fundraiser tea to raise money for the youth and missions efforts of the church. Uh, and that's going to be hosted at the C.O. Robinson House over on Main Street, right across the street from the, uh, the, the county courthouse. If you're interested in attending the tea, tickets can be purchased through the church office. Just uh, contact Kim in the office. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are called the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the 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 bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Post-communion prayers on page 9. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 397. Please stand as we sing.
Now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.